it's a brand new year, so I thought I would start out this year with a video on my goals and some thoughts on the miniature art form as a whole. And yes, I will be talking about one of the most common hate comments that I have seen on one of my most popular videos. I don't want to focus on it in a dramatic way, but more turn it into a positive, and that's where my thoughts come in. I'm basically going to be telling you why these hate comments are just wrong. So let's start out with the goals. I want to keep my main goals pretty simple, although all the steps to accomplish those goals are going to be pretty complicated. Goal one, complete the captain's quarters. There is a lot involved in this goal, but there is a possibility that the same museum that has the Adams Family House may want to show the captain's quarters when I go to pick up the Adams Family House. And if that is something that happens, I want to make sure that it is 100% complete by around September. That way I can finish up any loose ends and catalog everything before it goes to the museum. Even if the museum ends up not being interested in the project by the time I go back, I still want to complete the captain's quarters because I have some other projects I want to get started on and I really do have to limit myself here on the channel, you may not realize. <laughs> But having so many projects going on at once is really complicated and so I just have to limit myself. So I need to finish one before I can start another one. Goal two is going to be to finish the first floor of the Beetlejuice house in its entirety. That means the rooms, furniture, and accessories. I would also like to get the bare foam board walls up for the second floor. This goal may not seem very ambitious, but I'm trying to keep things realistic because I have to finish the captain's quarters this year. I also may start another netherworld scene during Beetle Gust, that's Beetlejuice videos all August long, so I'm keeping that in mind as well. Goal three is to add more Fairfield videos into the rotation. This guy, right here. If you have followed along with this project at all, you will know that I have struggled with keeping up my excitement and passion for it. And a lot of that is because the kit that the Fairfield, that's it's called a Fairfield kit, is extremely frustrating to put together. But last year I completed the shingling, the roof, most of the exterior is done. And so now I can just focus on interior finishes and making furniture, which I love. So 124 scale creators rejoice because hopefully, if all things go the way I'm planning, there will be more 124 scale furniture and accessories in the mix. Goal four is actually a goal for my store. I don't talk a lot about my store, but I do have a second channel where I put instructional videos and whenever an instructional video comes out, you know that a new kit has come out. So if you wanna follow along with that, I will have that linked down below. The three most popular kits that are in my store are 1930s kitchen appliances. It's a retro stove, a ice box, well the third one's not an appliance, but I mean you still use it in the kitchen, a Hoosier cabinet. So my goal for my store this year is to make a completed 1930s kitchen, room box, accessories, furniture, flooring, all of it. So it's all available in my store. So if you wanted to recreate the entire room like I do, you could purchase everything in one place. I've really struggled lately with balancing my channel and balancing the store because it feels like two separate jobs. So I may be showing a little bit more store content on the channel, maybe showing some packing videos or what I'm working on, or I may even show a video of me creating this 1930s kitchen because that means I'll get some more videos out on the channel and I'm still working on my store stuff at the same time. I'm just gonna kind of play with it. I think this is going to be the year of experimenting with new things on the channel. I would like this goal to be done by June. Well, I kind of have to get it done by June because that's when the Dallas Miniature Showcase is happening here where I live. And it would be great to be able to put that entire project out on my table. And if you are interested for more of that behind the scenes content, for example, my patrons have already seen the start to the 1930s kitchen because they just see what I'm doing each week. 
I only have one tier on Patreon. It's $2 a month and we do an extra group project and we have an extra live stream each month. I do two updates a week on what I'm up to. So it's kind of a fun, like casual community. So if you wanna check it out, I will put that in the description box as well. So those are my four main project goals for 2023. Each one of those huge major goals has so many sub goals underneath it, so many things I need to accomplish, such as furniture and design and learning techniques and trying out new things. So I'm already filming a little bit overwhelmed, I have to admit, by all of that but I'm also really excited for this upcoming year. So I hope you'll stick around if you're interested in any of that. And that overwhelmed feeling actually brings me to the hate comments that I mentioned I would be talking about in the beginning of the video. But before I get to those comments, if you have any goals you want to share with me or other people in this miniature community, feel free to leave a comment down below. I'm really hoping I'm going to remember at the end of 2023 to make a recap video to see if I actually was able to accomplish the goals that I just mentioned. So if you wanted to leave a goal here on this video and then check it with me at the end of this year, feel free to do so. Also, I would just love to hear what projects you have planned coming up. All right, so hate comments. Probably the clickbaity title that you clicked on this video for anyway. <laughs> I admit I also like to hear other people talk about what kind of comments they get on their channel and how they worked through it or what they thought about them because it's YouTube. Hate comments happen, unfortunately. I am very thankful for this community, all of you who comment on my videos. 99.5% of the comments I get are very positive and uplifting. Some of them are constructive criticism, but like I said, 99.5% of the time, it is given in a very positive, uplifting way where someone says, I really like this, but maybe you could also do this. Or if you had done this, maybe you would have liked it a little bit more because I'm pretty truthful about what I do and don't like on my projects. So thank you all for the positive place that you have made this channel. But like anyone, I do get hate comments. And if you ever have a video go viral, that's the video you're going to see the most negative comments on. It's just, it's what happens. And it's because the video goes outside of your regular group of people that watch your videos and understand what your core concept, or they've seen the progress in my case of what this project started out as and what it's become. Some of those comments hurt, some of them were funny, but the ones I'm going to be talking about today were just wrong. They're, they're just wrong. The video that these come from is my Adams Family finale video where I show the final tour of the Adams Family dollhouse. And I don't know if it technically counts as viral, but as compared to my regular view counts, it is viral for me. As of right now, it has over 2 million views. And that's way more than the amount of subscribers I have, so I had a lot of eyes on this video. So here are a few examples of this one type of hate comment that I kept seeing on this video. <coughs> what a waste of 11 years. 11 years to make such a waste of time and money. And the reply to that said, for real. What is even the point of wasting 11 years on this when you can just buy one already made? Can you? Can you? I'll link my um, costs of that project video down below if you want to see what it would cost to just flippantly buy that project. And it doesn't include a lot of my time and effort and skill value in that video. So just keep that in mind. <laughs> 11 question mark what a waste for such a result one day that thing will fall down and 11 years will go to waste this person severely underestimates how much glue i use in my projects for real i don't get it what a waste of talent and time if you haven't seen this video this is the thumbnail the 11 years is the bright eye catcher part of the video besides the dollhouse itself, which is what these commenters decided to focus on. And if these commenters had watched to the end 
of that video. I know it's long, it was 45 minutes long, but if they had really been interested in why I put in that much time to this project and watched to the end of the video, they would have heard that a lot of my life happened in those 11 years. I had multiple different jobs, I moved homes, I had health issues, I had two children during that time frame, and do you know how much time an infant takes up? Let alone a toddler, let alone an older toddler. They just keep getting more complicated. There were stretches of months during that time that I didn't even touch the Adams Family Project. But I did decide to include all of that time in my total, and I will explain why in a second. But before I move into my brain dump on all of these comments, I also wanted to read some positive comments that made me smile. This is the top comment on my video, and I see why. It's funny, it's a play on the thumbnail, it was a good comment. Obviously, if I had been building this project for somebody else, they would be waiting a very long time. This is why I don't take commissions. <laughs> I don't want people waiting a lifetime to get their project. Luckily, it was a project I made for my own enjoyment, but I also really enjoyed the comments that were replies to this top comment, so I'll read it for you. The comment says, Mom, here's your finished dollhouse. Daughter replies, I'm 27 now. <sighs> yeah, it's a good one. It's a good one. But underneath it, it says, I'd still want this even if I was 27. <laughs> The comment below that says, my mom gave me her last dollhouse when I was 26. We worked on it together and it's so amazing. Now I'm 34 and it's clear I need to personalize it to my taste by aging it, staining it, ripping some wallpaper, etc. Little mysterious details, hidden eyes glowing in the dark. It's going to be awesome. The one under that says, I'm 50 and I would totally love this dollhouse. <laughs> And underneath that, it says, I'm 42 and I would still play with this dollhouse. And there were multiple other comments like that, which just made me so happy. <laughs> and there were many more positive, uplifting comments on that video, but I do know as a creator here on YouTube, for some reason, it's the negative ones that stick in your head and play on repeat and go over and over and over again. <laughs> And many of them were thankful that I showed that a long-term project was possible, that you could just keep muddling through. And I like to say this a lot when people say they hadn't touched their project for a while. I say, miniatures are good at waiting on us to be ready because you just never know what life is going to throw at you. And sometimes we need a miniature project and sometimes we need a break from miniature projects. And that's why I included all of that time in my 11 years. I needed to include that timeline because if I took out all the time I didn't work on the project and told you, oh, it only took me like two years worth of working on it full time. And then I didn't tell you that that was spread over 11 years of my life. I mean, that's not setting a realistic goal, I think, because we do have other things we need to do, people we need to pay attention to, mental health that we need to take care of. So I see all of that time, even the time not working, as a necessary part of working on miniatures. And that time might be greater for some, and it might be less for some other people, depending on what's happening in your life. Now I shall prove why they are wrong. I wrote a script. I don't normally write a script, but I needed to think through my thoughts. Even if the house did one day fall over and break or go up in flames and it was gone forever, none of it was a waste of time. It's not a waste of time as much as working on an oil painting is not a waste of time. It's not a waste of time as much as reading a good book is not a waste of time. It's not a waste of time as much as writing a book is not a waste of time. The journey and the learning and the joy from the creation process was a big part of why I created that project and continued to work on that project. And there was so much art therapy for me in that project. Time when I just needed to sit and think and be with my thoughts and work with my hands and create something that 
was uniquely made by me. Was it perfect? No. There's things I can go back and look at and say, oh, I can do that better now. But I couldn't do that back then because I was still in this learning process. I was still in this process of becoming the miniaturist I am today. And I wouldn't be able to make the projects I'm making today without going through the process of creating the Adams Family House. And I will admit, when I first started creating miniatures, I didn't understand this whole journey part of the art form. I saw the finish line as the goal. I felt like as long as the Adams Family House was standing unfinished, that I had accomplished nothing. I had nothing to show for it. Even though the project had things going on in it all along, if it wasn't finished, then what was even the point? But that takes value out of the learning process and the utter joy I got from just sitting down and being able to work on it a few hours whenever I could find time. When I think about the Adams Family House now, encased in a museum, which is really cool, obviously, um, it is now being used for the enjoyment of others, which is great. I love that people are able to go see it and enjoy the project by looking at it and seeing characters that they recognize and accessories that they saw made on my channel. But my happiest moments with the Adams Family House were during the creation process. And it did take me a while to really start focusing on the journey part of the art form instead of always focusing on that final finish line. And it was some of these comments that I read that really had me starting to think about it. Think about, are they right? Did I waste 11 years on a project when I could have been doing something else? And the answer is no, they're not right. Even if you don't make miniatures, you have that thing that feeds your soul that you need to do. Earlier, I compared it to reading. I know there are avid readers out there and that is their warm, cozy place where they just get to curl up and, and be, and just be themselves and be in that moment. And for me, that is miniatures and everybody needs that. And I had a very happy place for 11 years that I could go and work on miniatures in the Adams Family House. So no, it was not a waste. So don't get me wrong, finished projects are amazing and they're such a joy to show to other people. A lot of people love miniatures even if they don't make them. But even if I never even finished the Adams Family House, even if I never saw it again, that time still would have been worth it to me. So my final goal of the year, goal number five, is to enjoy the journey more. I know I started this video with goals and deadlines and I still want to meet those if I can, but I wanna take time and just stop in the moment and really appreciate the time I have creating and just realize that 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 is where my joy of the project is really coming from. And I hope if you do leave your goals down below in the comments that you will set at least one goal that has to do with your happiness in this realm of making miniatures. For example, a good goal might be to be nicer to yourself when you know you need to take a break or be kind to yourself and realize that all of us are in a learning process and that's a great thing to remember when things don't come out as perfect as we want them to be. Another goal could be to be okay with setting aside a project that you're not as passionate about right now and being okay with coming back to it later when that passion reignites. This guy is proof that that can happen over and over again. It's kind of a cycle, it's a love-hate cycle, but eventually you will get there and right now I'm in love. I'll work on it for a few weeks and then it'll be back to hate, but we just keep cycling around and eventually, <laughs> eventually we'll be there. So that's my little speech for the beginning of 2023. It was a speech reminder to myself, but I hope it may have helped you as well as you start out this new creative year. I have a new Captain's Quarters video coming up for you very soon, which is going to be a big jump start into my goals for the year. It's a gigantic mess and there's stuff everywhere. It's just off camera right here, but I'm very excited and I am enjoying the process. Goal number five, enjoy the process. I can do goal number one and goal number five at the same time. 
Happy New Year, everyone, and I will see you in the next video. Bye. <sighs> My stomach's growling. <laughs> I hope you can't hear that. This video has a lot of talking. Oh my goodness. We're working through it. We're working through it. My stomach just growled again. Oh, where was I? Am I saying this correctly? I'm saying waste of time lots of times in a row. <laughs> I did. I said all the words. <laughs>